Now, if we can ever get that into our hearts and to our spirits, that someone died for the evil and the wickedness and the wrong in my life. Make it personal. Because we all know who we are. We all know where we came from. Look back 10, 15, 20 years. We all were not always saved. We weren't born that way. God had to do a work, a miracle within our hearts to reach out and stir us to the point to where we wanted to say, oh, I need a savior. I need to be saved. I'm tired of bumping my head up against the wall, tasting my own blood, and recognizing that I'm the only one who's causing my own problems. Based on my own choices and decisions. When we decided to come to Christ on this side, it was the greatest choice we ever made. We not only made the great choice, but we saved our lives. Through the dedication and faith and the belief that the Savior, who shed his blood on Calvary's cross, forgave my sins, past, present, and future. Oh yes, future, because we will continue to sin. The book of Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And 6.23 of Romans says that, basically, the wages of sin is death. And we serve a holy God, so if we committed sin, we deserve death. But he, he sent a savior based on our own response and our faith that if we accept him and come out of darkness, come out of darkness. Men, did, men love darkness because it exposed our evil deeds didn't expose them, brother. And light came along, which was Jesus, who walked the earth and showed us the true and only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. So that is the avenue, the way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No test, no trial or temptation has come upon any of us that is not common to all men and all women. But God is faithful with that Test trial or temptation, not to place upon us more than we are able to bear, yes. but will always provide a way of escape. Yes. The way of escape is Jesus. Yes. The way of escape is Jesus and his cross. If we do not place our faith in the cross of Jesus and what he accomplished on that, basically we're living our lives in vain. You know where you were 10, 15, 20 years ago before you got saved, before you came to Christ. It seemed like um, every day was a day, a rainy day. <laughs> Even when you were having fun, it was still a rainy day because Jesus wept over each and every one of our souls. He loves us that much that he would weep over the sins that we were going to commit. But then, a lot of people say, I found God. No, you didn't find God. He, <laughs> he found you. All you did was respond to the to the pulling of God. He was never lost. We were lost. And it's one of those things that if we can ever get that part right, then the rest of it will fall in line. In and of ourselves, we don't have the ability to find God. We need his, his, his spirit within us, indwelt within us, to lead and guide and direct us to him. Without his spirit, we cannot be, even obey his commandments. We can't obey, we can't love one another. We can't do anything without his spirit. The Bible says that basically, John 15, 5. But without me, you can do nothing. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Without me, you can do nothing. I tried personally for 40 years. <laughs> and thought I was making progress. Until I woke up one day and, wow, I was still in the same condition, spiritually, that I began in when I first stepped foot in the church. There was a difference between joining church and being born in the church. A lot of people come to church for many different reasons, but that's just to check off that box. Say, I've been there. Lord, I went to church this morning. Yeah, but he said, did you give me anything? Your time, your talent, your resources. Did you offer up your heart of praise to me for what I've done? 
it's one of those things where we think that if I come to church, the Lord will see me. He'll check it out. It's a good work. I can go about my business the rest of the week and just do whatever I please. No, no, no. We were not saved to continue in sin. It's not a license to sin because we were saved. We were saved to be a blessing to someone else. Someone else. Whomever crosses our path. Doesn't matter the male, female, the color, the denomination. Put it in your prayer. Lord, allow me, enable me to be a blessing to any and all that cross my path. Help me to have a word in season and out of season. A word of praise and prayer, mercy and grace, love and compassion. Because these are the things, the characteristics of Christ. We have to learn how to push those things. Uh, as Paul said, push them behind us. Don't look back. I heard that in Sunday school this morning. Don't look back. There's nothing behind you. And you can't change the past. Your future, my future, is all in Christ. And that's what we look forward to. The soon coming of our Savior. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he will return. But this time it won't be as a baby. This time he'll come on a white stallion. Yeah. And when he bursts through those eastern clouds, I guarantee you we who are his will be received by him with joy. Yeah. We will be looking forward to it expectantly because we know what he has in store for us. Yeah. Before he left, he made us a promise. He said, in my house of many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. But guess what? These are spiritual mountain, uh, not a mansion. So you don't need much room. You might think you're going to have five bedrooms and two baths and a couple of kitchens. No. You're not going to need all that where you're going. In your spiritual mind, you, you, you just, it's not going to matter, okay? The food you be eating, it won't be McDonald's, it'll be manna. Okay? You'll be drinking living water, not this down here, this bottled water. So you 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 and I have to perceive and have a perception that what God has in store for us is for us, and it's far greater than what we are presently living through now. Regardless of the test, the trial, or the temptation, put it like this. Whatever you're going through now, there's someone going through this worse off than you. So you don't focus on your trial. You don't focus on your trouble. You thank God that what well, James chapter 1 says, count it all joy yes. when you fall into these diverse temptations. Count it all joy. Now I know that sounds foolish because you say, well, God, why in the world would I want to be joy rejoicing when I'm going through, when I'm having pain? But this is a character builder. If you don't go through nothing, you can't tell nobody nothing. You can't help nobody. Christ said that no one down here has shed blood on the cross for the sins that they have committed. But yet and still, he was able to shed blood for any and all who would believe. So it depends on who am I believing. There's a lot of voices in the world today. But are you listening to the correct voice? The spirit from within that convicts you that, hey, you shouldn't go there, you shouldn't say that, you shouldn't do that, but you should, on the other hand, repent. Or you should, on the other hand, say, I'm sorry, thank you. Amen. You know, these words are fleeing us for our vocabulary. People don't say thank you anymore. People don't say I'm sorry anymore. Right. And it's, it's because the Bible said in Matthew 24 that the love of man will wax cold in the last days. And it is truly, we're living that part. Yeah. But thanks be to God, we have the love of Christ dwelling in us that we can rejoice in a bad situation. All right. If you trust in him as Lord and Savior, even your worst of times can be your best of times. Yeah. You simply have to praise him. That's it. The Lord, this is too big for me. It's just right for you. And I know if I, you told me if I come to your throne, Hebrews 4 and 12, if I let us boldly go to his throne in our time of need, that we may obtain grace and mercy. He didn't say don't come. He didn't say if you come. He said come. 
and he promises to relieve the burden that is on our shoulders. And there's one thing about it, we all have carried some weight on our shoulders. Whether it's the weight of worry, the weight of tomorrow, the worry of this evening. The worry you can't change, not one hair on your head, not even the height of you. Worry does nothing for you but cause you to stumble. It hinders your walk in Christ. Worry is of the devil. He said he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, love. And if we operate in that, there's no hindrance that, can, that the enemy can throw in front of us that will stop us. That's a part of the love of God shared on us. And we have to learn that love is the most powerful word in the, in the world, period. God is love, but if you use that love and show that love and live that love, you'd be surprised the doors that will open for you. It doesn't matter where you're at. It could be at a play, at home, or wherever, in church, the doors are open because the love of Christ dwells in you. Yes. And when you extend your hand, it's not asking for something. It's, in other words, giving of yourself. Giving of yourself, giving of your time, your talent, your resources. If it's nothing but an embrace. We need embracing nowadays because there's so much going on. Uh, just a hug will do you good in the morning. Amen. You walk out the door and, and everything is going on. But God says not to worry about that because I have you in the palm of my hand and no one can take you out of it. Psalms 139 verses 5 to 10 says, You have a hedge behind and before me and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I make, if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. He says, but if I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall uphold me. So it's, once you come into Christ, there's nowhere you can go from him. Right. It's a matter of realization that, hey, he was always there. Yeah. We just had to open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears and hear that still, small voice. Right. He's been speaking all along. He never changes. We change. Yeah. We change. We change with our emotions. We change with our attitudes and our behaviors yeah. and our conduct. We even change the menu. <laughs> That's the greatest love that we have from God. But then he goes on, he said that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. I don't know how many mothers in here would give up their son or their daughter, their only child, just for someone you don't even know. But if God touched you right now and said sacrifice them for the good of all, We'd have to be obedient. We would have to be obedient. Trusting just like Abraham did. Yes. His son said, Dad, I see the wood. <laughs> <laughs> and I see the knife. But where's the sacrifice? <laughs> Abe said, Son, God will provide. Yes. So we have to trust that God will provide in the dire situations that we're in. Amen. Doesn't matter what they are. Not allowing yourself to go into depression behind something that this world is trying to do to you because you are a believer. You simply need to go to the Psalms and pull out your favorite one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. <sighs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for God thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they covered me. I prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head, Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. That dwelling in the house of the Lord is not a building made with hands. This is in the presence of the one and only holy and true God. You don't need to to, to have a building when you're in the presence of God. 
He provides all the comfort that you need. There's no coldness, there's no warmness, there's only comfort, love, and compassion. But don't think you're going to be lazy when you get there. <laughs> He's got work for you and I to do. You will not be walking around heaven all day. No, that ain't, that's just a trick of the devil. It ain't going to happen. The, the scripture says he's going to make us priests and teachers so that we can help someone else into the kingdom, enabling us to, to be a blessing and not a hindrance to those who cross our path. That's a part of being the only begotten son because no one else, none of our blood is pure enough to climb up on a cross and die for the sins of the world. And when you think about it, that sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, is something that you should give thanks to God for all day long, right. every day. Because had it not been for that cross, where would we be now? Right. I wouldn't be standing before you preaching this. Right. You would be sitting there listening to it. We'd still be either dead or in jail or not even thought of. You see, because the world has got all kinds of things they call um, religious rituals to get us to worship or to go to their God or to keep us spiritually immature. But God says, if you study my word, if you meditate on it, and you sincerely pray and seek me, you will find me in whatever need, circumstance that is. Every day we should strive to raise our spiritual condition, to raise it. God bless each of us with a measure of faith. When he returns, he doesn't want you to have that same measure. It should be increased, increased to the point to where your faith out is taller than you. You can look up to your faith and know that, hey, that's what got me through. That faith brought me over. That is what brought me over. Many times, we forget the scripture in Hebrews 11, 6, that it, without faith it's impossible to please him. Right. And those that believe him must diligently seek him. Yeah. That means tirelessly, not yeah. giving up. Yeah. Seeking God for an answer, for a breakthrough. He says the greatest part is his son, the gift of his heart, his begotten son. The world will give you kings and presidents, but none of them can atone for our sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, you don't hear about the blood too much in churches nowadays because it's offensive, just like the cross. Yes, yes, yes. But those of you who saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, that was a bloody movie. And a lot of people converted after that movie and gave their lives to Christ. But that movie couldn't be half of the blood that was shed on that cross. The Bible says that he was beaten beyond recognition. You couldn't even recognize him on the cross. But yet and still, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Another part of that grace and love is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Why be weighted down in, in prison, a mental prison, because you're holding an alt? <laughs> A disagreement for 5, 10, 15, 20 years not setting the captives free. You're the only captive. You have to be able to forgive. Like my wife always says, uh, you got to be like a duck's back and let the water just roll off. <laughs> it don't bother me. <laughs> Sooner or later, the longer, if, if you develop scales like a fish or, or maybe even feathers, things start to stick to you and you don't want to release them or you don't know how to release them well the scripture says cast all your cares upon me for he cares for you that's every single thing lord i don't feel like going to work today he'll probably ask you too maybe you don't feel like getting paid you, you, you have to, I 
operate in the system here, but you don't know how you what the Romans say. Be in the world, but not of the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know that you have to survive. You gotta pay a mortgage or rent. You gotta buy groceries. You know all this. So why wouldn't you want to go to work just because you don't feel like it? Do you feel like coming to church? The time you don't go to work, come to church. I guarantee you go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> You'll go back because you said this is too much, this is too much Christ. <laughs> But that's okay. God knows our limits. He says, Jesus Christ is the greatest gift because he forgives sins, cleanses hearts, gives peace and eternal life. All to all who repent and believe. Second Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Indescribable. Now, I don't know, maybe you think that the gift of salvation is something that uh, you can write down, put it in a book, put it in words, maybe even put it into action. But it's not as simple as you think. There was a cost, a price to be paid. You and I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Redeemed, that means bought back from the slavery of the enemy. Because before we knew him, he was our boss. He was telling us where to go and when to come home and when not to come home. And when and who to look at and who not to look at, who to listen to and who not to listen to. We had a different music, a different dance. Man, everything was different because we were of the world. But now, thanks be to God, we found out that salvation is a work in progress. That's why Peter said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. It's not something to be taken for granted. It's something that if we don't stay on straight street, we can lose this. A lot of people think, once saved, always saved. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's why he put that gate in there called the grace of repentance. Without it, you, you, you basically are dirty, filthy. Your garment is unclean. Your mind is still unclean. But with it, his spirit cleanses the inside out. People may not see it on the outside until you actually have the transformation. But guess what? When they do see it, my, 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 they draw to you like a magnet. What is it you got? I want some of that. Because they can see it in your walk, they hear it in your talk, they see it on your face and your expression. And um, most importantly, they see it in your generosity, your hospitality. This is what it makes you different from the world. He said, salvation is God's work. Man is saved on account of Jesus Christ. Now thank God for making a way of escape from sin so that we can come to God. How many of us tried to come to God on our own way, in our own way, before we really knew how to come to God? John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Save, the dictionary, divine save is to preserve by care. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and that the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Pray that for someone. I pray that your whole soul, body, and spirit be sanctified. I guarantee you get a response. And uh, you probably won't have a busy phone. Well, you probably will. They'll be calling up. Some more considerations. But Jesus tells us to have a word in season and out of season. Always to give to those who ask, well, what is the reason for your hope? Each of us has a reason to tell someone why we hope. Don't lose hope. Because that's Christ. And that in itself is what keeps us going. 
goes on with the greatest faith that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Many Christians believe that God, for divine healing, mountain moving miracles, but faith is pleasing God. Faith is pleasing God. That's Hebrews 11, 6. So without faith, it is impossible to please him. If you want to please God, show your faith. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. You ain't got to see it. Believe it. He says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. And those that seek him diligently, that means you can never give up. Yes. Never give up. In the world, you may have... Uh, been running down the field, thought you were going to score a touchdown, but ran out of gas and stopped. Got tackled 10 yards before, <laughs> before the goal line. Some people start missions, start projects, but never complete them. Right. Yeah. On this side, we expect to complete yes. our Christian walk. Yes. I think we didn't say it would be easy. No. Through faith, we live and we overcome. First John 5 and 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Revelation 12 and 11 says, And they overcame him, him being Satan, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto death. Each of us has a testimony. We may not be there yet, but we all have to get there where we're willing to die for what we believe. If he died on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago, and he already knew we would continue in these old real worldly ways. We would continue to strive with one another, lie, steal, cheat, whatever. But upon the grace of repentance, We've been restored back into our right relationship. Why is it that when we get in trouble, we run the other way? Run to God. Run to the altar. Confess and believe that, hey, it's white clean. I can start anew. Nobody ever said that man wouldn't go and remember your ways, what you did back then, 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, as I said before, that's true. I did it. But not anymore. God has washed me by his blood. Yes. And now I'm cleansed. And I have his spirit spirit dwelling in me. So I'm, in, I'm able to move on. To march forward. To be a blessing to someone else. There's one thing about it. When we get down to how the Bible makes it clear. That he that hath the son hath life. That he that hath not the son does not have life. First John 5 and 12. All that is required is repentance and belief. Lift up your eyes to the Savior on the cross. Just like we learned that those who were looking up at the snake could live. But before they looked up, a lot of people died. But thanks be to God, it was an example to us then as it is now. The cross. The cross. That's what the object of our faith. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the, basically the, the resource, the source of our power. And the result is victorious living. Victorious living. We all want to be victorious. We all want to hear that final word when the Lord comes back and says, Well done, good and faithful servant. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Don't be ashamed to say the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is right on the tip of your lips. That name makes demons tremble. It makes them tremble. And it could be those persons who is inhabited by those demons. They'll tremble too. But the name of Jesus. Don't be like the sons of Sceva. In that name that Paul said, we are Jew of thee, believe. No, you have to have a personal relationship with him. We have to. It's the only way that we can make it in this world with all the craziness that's going on. But if one thing about it, there's a definite end where we will be in the presence of God. We are able.
able to relish that presence. We are able to worship continuously. If you don't want to worship down here, you'll be in trouble. But that's all they do up there. <laughs> all they do. Learn to worship. <laughs> Trust me. It'll benefit you. Gentle and merciful condition that our Savior and our salvation depends on. Whosoever believeth shall not perish. Shall not perish. That perish is separation from God. Total. Eternal. There is no, no more excuses. You can't go back. But everlasting life. We look forward to that everlasting life. That's something that, that, that gives you joy in the morning. You wake up, Lord, what you have me for, have for me to do today? Ask him and see if you don't direct your path. The path of a good, the Bible says, the path of a good man is ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's a woman too. Put him first in all that you do and watch him move on your behalf. Open those doors that no man can close and close those doors that no man can open. And you'd be wondering, how did I get here? God had a plan all along. All he wanted to know or see was your response to his call. If the Spirit has touched your heart this morning and you do not know him in the pardon of your sin, don't leave here without making a commitment to our Lord and Savior. He's the ever-present God. The doors of the church are open. For those who don't know him in the pardon of his sins, he's more than a doctor, more than a healer, more than a husband, and more than a wife. He can satisfy your loneliest moments. Jesus satisfied. He'll meet every need. He'll gather every tear in his own bottle. They say when it rains, when the sun is shining, those are the tears of the saints. And when they're down, God's blessings. Or perhaps there'll be one who just wants to reconcile their walk with Christ. Maybe you strayed, backslide. God understands. It's not about us. Who are we? He can't look upon any other soul and judge. But we have but one judge. And he looks upon the heart where we look upon the outside, the exterior. Or perhaps you just need special prayer for whatever you're going through. Doesn't matter who prays for you. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. That is what actuates the prayer. Your faith in turning to the Lord. And he says, cast all your cares upon me. But he also says in Philippians 4 and 6, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to him. And then verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm happy my heart is guarded, my mind is guarded. I couldn't say that 20 years ago, but thanks be to God, he had something else in store. there isn't one, then I'll offer a community prayer. Father in heaven, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your holy touch, your ministering spirit. Father, we pray that if there's anything that is in us that is not like you, that you would please forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon our souls. 
Father, we ask that your spirit would continue to lead and guide and direct us. Turn not your face from our presence, nor your ear from our prayers, dear Lord, but hear us. You know the circumstance and the situation. You know what's ahead in the future. We ask you right now, Lord God, to be merciful to us. Lay your hand of love upon us. Answer these our prayers. Fulfill these wishes and desires according to your will, Lord God. Let it be a blessing to you as a sweet aroma of incense. That you may look upon us with favor as your children. And we love you, Lord. We don't always say it, nor do we always show it, but we do love you because you first loved us. And it is in your Son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, that we pray. Please and other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.